uh, to technology revolution in IR 2.0. And when the times goes around in the third phase of revolutions, we can see that this is the, the time is come to the digital revolutions in the late 20th century. So by now you can see that the, the embark of the IT companies such as Apple, such as Microsoft in our life. So you can also in the factory, there is the manufacturing by using a computer or the, there's a system base. So it's easy for our productions so that we can increase uh, the, the yearly production instead of in this RIF 2.0. And then to the current situations, we can have the fourth uh, IR 4.0 which on the cyber physical system. So this is the present conditions and the main issues about the IR 4.0 is on the economical, social, political, and also the organizations. Other than that, when we try to relate SDG 4 with the IR 4.0 is the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Can we achieve the objective of the SDG, 4, uh, SDG 9? And then the adaptation to innovation, which defined the industrial revolution 4.0. I believe that some of us are afraid to embrace the technology because we are not born in the year of the 20th century, for example. We are late uh, in 80s. So this is the time where we have to change from the uh, second revolution to the fourth revolution. It's very fast changing in the world. So what we need to do is to focus on the technologies driving it, such as artificial intelligence, AI, new computational technologies, and big data, robotic, 3D printing, the internet of things, IoT, virtual and augmented reality, blockchain, and technology. So as you look at here in the IR 4.0, these are the components that we have to master in even though the 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 data management easily to cater by having the iot for example or we also have the cloud uh what we call it as a cloud computing so in the industry 4.0 we can see the changes from the in the, uh, from the from the uh what we call it from the manpower uh, technology for example upgrade into the automations, having the big data, cloud computing, autonomous IoT, and also the data management. I, I believe that some of you before this never heard about the cloud, uh, what we call it as a Google Drive, what we call it as a Dropbox. We never heard. But then when it comes to the industrial 4.0, we have to get used to it. We, now we are using the Google Drive. We have uh, the Dropbox to store all the documents, just, uh, just easy to manage and to get when it is necessary. And also, uh, the changes that we have to embrace in the IR 4.0 by integrating with the sustainable development goals in an innovation platform, which can help in decision makers make the right choices to use technology as leverage to achieve the SDG. So we cannot put apart uh, the industrial 4.0 in the SDG. So there's, there's our 17th SDG, one of it is the SDG number nine. And also when we look at closely the components of industry 4.0, for example, here, they are autonomous robots, which means that a lot of robots being used in big factory or big productions company. And also we have simulations to predict or to simulate any process as, or any situations. We also have system integration. We have the internet of things, which is easy to be used in daily and also the cyber security the cyber security is very important to secure our data from breaking and from um, breaking uh, from breaking informations and we have the cloud computing and the last one is the big data so now for this afternoon i'm going to focus on the computer modeling and simulation so how does the components apply in our daily daily life for example we can use the IR 4.0 in space technology, AR and VR, and also the neural technology. So we also can have the applications in new computing technologies, IoT, for example. So you can see right now, some um, some of this technology has been adapted in the construction project. For example, uh, if the engineer wants to monitor the progress of the project, the engineer only use the internet of 
things to monitor to cater the problems occur on site. So it is safe time instead of the engineer go down to the site and check one problem to one problem, which can consume time and cost. And then uh, the next one on the power of computer modeling and simulation. What is modeling and simulation? It is the use of model, for example, physical, mathematical, or logical representations of a system, entity, phenomena, or process as a basis for simulation to develop data utilized for managerial or technical decision making. So you can see that by having the modeling and simulations, it is uh, two things that we can have from it is a managerial managerial and also decision making. So it's very important, these two things for the uh, current situations and current days. And then when it rela uh, relates to our life, it is come with the reality. So what are the problems that you, you want to model or to simulate? And then what kind of model that you want to adopt in your computer modeling? And then after you have decided the modeling technique, you need to do the simulations. Is it the simulation can bring to you the reality or can predict the end of the output, the results of uh, what you expect to be? So these are the process involved uh, when you are doing the modeling and simulations. Again, when you look at closely to uh, from these two figures, we have the model qualifications, we have model verifications, we have the model validations. So it, it started by reality. What's your problems? And then from the reality here, we bring to the conceptual model. So it means that we have to analyze, identify our problem, identify what are causes, factors, so that you can have your own conceptual model. After you have the conceptual model, you need to do some sort of programming. So the programming can be done in any computer tool. So uh, in this stage, we are using the computerized model to predict, to have the output uh, from the process. So in this stage, finally, it's bring to you the computer simulations to end up what is the expectation from your reality or from your problem. And then don't forget all this for, uh, one cycle, one process must involve with a model verification and also the model validations. Same goes to this figure on the right side here. It shows to you that, as I said, when you are doing the modeling and simulations, it's some sort of the mathematical model or you have the physical model. The physical model can be, uh, can be replicated from the experimental work and you have uh, observed data and then you set up with a hypothesis. Later on, you come up with a medical model to simulate the real conditions or what you have from the experimental or from the physical model. We expect that it is represent the real system of your problem. So it is shows you that the advantages of the computer modeling and simulations in our daily life or daily use. So again, this is similar process. Let's uh, you start off with a problem and then we, uh, we identify the purpose and the scope and you have to formulate the conceptual model. You acquire and analyze the data, design the detailed model, verify and validate the model, design the experiment, execute simulation, and finally analyze the output and refine the optimized model. Is it acceptable or not acceptable? So these are this is the complete uh, process when you involve in computer modeling and simulations. Again, I have to explain because some sort of these uh, students, uh, for example, they are, afraid, they are afraid to use computer modeling and simulation because they don't understand what is modeling, what is simulations. So the thing is that we want to predict or we want to replicate the physical problem and you want to see what's going to happen in the future or what's going to uh, happen if you are taking this process in our model. So by having this one, we can a simulate and also we can predict the output from your uh, expectations or from your input problem. So this is the process where you have to define the research problem and then you specify the purpose. And next one is you collect data and information, build conceptual model, select simulation method, choose the right simulation tool, and then develop the simulation model and conduct verification and also the validation experiments. Is everything goes okay, so you can do the documentation or you can report to the respective persons. 
Okay, the computer modeling and simulation is assist in the design, creations, and evaluation of the complex system. So the computer simulation modeling to understand and evaluate what if case scenarios. So the most computer modeling and simulation applied by designers, program managers, analysts, and also the engineers. It can model a real or proper system using computer software, and it is useful when changes to the actual system are difficult to implement, involve high cost or and impractical. Examples are weather forecasting, flight simulators used for training pilot and car crash modeling. So uh, as you can see here, this is the simulator for parking, for example. If we have a visitor come in here, and then how we can simulate the process? Is it the process goes smoothly? Or how long it takes uh, from one visitor uh, pass through to the system number two? So by having this uh, computer simulation, we can predict, we can estimate how long it takes to complete one complete cycle. So it's very good uh, for you to have this kind of simulation, uh, something that we have uh, been, built, uh, been built yet. So we want to know what's happened uh, if we take this process or what happened if you build for the future. So uh, the first uh, or the early stage is can be done using the computer modeling and simulations. So this is a good thing for forecasting actually. So you can see that how, uh, how the process uh, takes, is it smoothly or is it having the uh, disturbance? And also, uh, you can see that advantages of having computer modeling and simulations, for example, it is understands of process bottlenecks in processes. Uh, if you have a problem, so we can identify at the early stage. And similarly to here, we can go in detail what kinds of problem that we are facing. Of Are we going to have uh, some uh, two models or one model is just enough to, come, uh, to solve the problem or to do the computer modeling. And the next one is to evaluate effect of system or process changes, identify actions needed to improve or mitigate processes or event, and then lastly to evaluate impact of changes in policy prior to implementations. So something that as I said, it's the good about computer modeling and simulation is we can have the early prevention before we build any building or before we construct any project that highly consume big amount of money. So uh, the, the helps of IR 4.0 in any applications is good uh, if we can embrace the technology in our life. Okay, this is a, some example type of simulations model that we have. For, uh, for example, here is a discrete model. So it is changes to the system occur at specific times. For example, it's a division of property management, trouble calls, a question of construction business processes, a manufacturing system which parts entering and leaving at specific time, and second types of uh, simulation process. For example, uh, here is continuous model. Uh, the state of the system changes continuously over time. For example, here is a reservoir as water flows in and out. So this is uh, relates with the uh, time as a variable. And the next one is a mixed model, contains both discrete and continuous elements. Okay, what types of data or information uh, before we can develop a simulation model? For example, here, uh, the overall process flow and its associated resources, what is being produced, served, or act, open by the processes and frequency at which the entities arrive in the processes, how long do individual steps in the process take, and lastly is a probability distribution that characterize real life uncertainties. So, it means that when we are doing some process, we have to identify what are data as a inputs. And then in the process, we have to identify what are models to be used in our computer software. And then what the aspect result as an output we, we expect to be. So as a developer, or as an engineer, you have to tackle all these issues. So identify this kind of data can save your computer modeling and simulations. Okay, these are some tools available uh, in the market. For example, if you are in civil engineering, we have the Stat Pro, and we also have the Com Comson Multiphysics, and the last one is the MATLAB and um, PATSYS. Okay, let me show you one case example, uh, computer modeling and simulations. This is uh, one case in geotechnical engineering. For example, we have layer of soil, 
and then we are this uh, on top of soil subjected to a vertical load. So how does this soil we behave when the loads act on it? So for example, we have a foundations, we have a structure uh, we place on the foundations. Is it our foundation safe uh, in terms of bearing capacity or it may fail? So before we can start the design um, process in order to determine the size of footing or whatsoever, so we can do the computer modeling and simulations. So the purpose of doing this computer modeling for this project is to determine the ultimate bearing capacity of the layered soil. So uh, as, you, as you know, the foundation engineering, uh, it is most important to determine the bearing capacity of compacted sand or gravel layer on soft clay which often occurs. So the top layer here, we can assume as a stronger compared to the bottom layer. So the bottom layer is a soft clay. So it's a very weak in terms of the uh, strength of the soil. And then the ultimate bearing capacity by definition is the strength of bearing pressure at which the ground is estimated to fail in shear, which failure will happen. So you see that when we have this computer modeling and simulation, we can predict is it the bearing capacity is safe or not safe. If we design this size of footing and then we do the simulation and the bearing capacity is fail, which, which is the factor of safety is not acceptable before uh, prior to the uh, constructions. So we can do the re redesign stage. So in terms of that, we can ensure the safety of the building before it is uh, constructed. So what we expect is that a punching shear failure with large penetration occurs. So this is uh, what we uh, assume as a hypothesis. So this is the uh, simulation computer modeling and this is the bearing capacity, uh, bearing capacity of the soil when subjected to a foundation load. Okay, this is the process involved in the computer modeling and simulations. For example, uh, numerical model, by using the finite element analysis and method. So first of all, when you involve in com computer modeling and simulations, you need to identify what are processes involved. For example here, uh, I want to estimate the bearing capacity of the soil. So uh, in the process of the, uh, of the software or of the computer modeling, I have to start off by drawing the geometry model in three dimensions. And then I have to assign loads and boundary condition in this second step. And the next one is to assign material models and parameters. And the next one is a mesh generations. And lastly, is a testing scheme in order to achieve the objective ultimate bearing capacity. So I, I assume some of the students might not like uh, about the computer modeling and simulation because they don't know what they are, uh, what they are need to do inside the software itself. I mean that if you're doing the experiment, it can be seen easily because it is physical model. However, when you are doing the computer modeling and simulation, it's like some sort of mathematical model. As you can see here, the finite element is part of the mathematical. It's, uh, it's involved with a lot of um, some calculations matrix. So just imagine if you are doing the mathematical calculation hand calculation, it will take longer state to solve the equations. However, by having the computer modeling and simulations, the, the problem can be solved easily. Okay, so that's, I want to show the power of uh, computer modeling and simulations in our education or whatever in our life, for example. So for this one, I'm using the Plexis 3D as a tool or computer software. Okay, this is similar process that are uh, involved in the computer modeling and simulation, what, uh, uh, which shows to you that the first one is uh, setting or modeling the drawing the geometry model in 3D then sand overlaying soft clay. So uh, my hypothesis, my assumption is that the, the bottom layer is a very weak soil. So we can expect what will be the ultimate bearing capacity on the top of sand layer. So this foundation is subjected to vertical loading 500 kPa. So it is, uh, it is applied until failure is achieved. So this is the uh, dimension of the soil layers and also the dimensions of the footing. And the next one, we have to apply the loading and boundary conditions. So uh, about computer modeling and simulation, when you are doing, uh, when you are doing with them, you have to bear in mind is that Whatever inputs you uh, you come in, whatever inputs you apply into the software, it, it brings you a result. 
how do we know that our results is reliable or the result is true? So that is come with the process uh, data validation and data uh, data verification. Validation and verification are important in our computer modeling process. So uh, what do we need to do during this stage is that uh, apply the vertical boundary, which is set as a 4B from the ground surface. And it is assumed that the stress induced terminated at this depth. And besides that, we have to assign the mesh generation. The mesh generation also play important role in order to have the final result. For example, here you can see the different sizes of mesh close to the foundations and also the, the, to the soil masses. And you can see very fine mesh uh, were assigned near to the foundation and the medium uh, mesh are uh, assigned to, to all the soil masses elements. So as the size footing be increased, the model size increased. So these are what we expect to be in the modeling. Okay, other than that, we have to assign the material models and parameters. So you can see that for this case of when you are do, uh, dealing with a uh, soil, the soil and structure will have different behavior. So by having the computer modeling as a, our tool, so it is easy to predict the behavior of these two material. I mean that the, the soil behavior and also the foundation structure behavior. Before that, you have to assign the material properties. For example, here, uh, we assign the soil model as a more column, and then we have to identify the parameters or the variable that influence to the output of our results. And also, uh, we, because of we have layered soil, you need to identify the, uh, the geometry or the thickness of the top and bottom layers. So these are the testing scheme we we'll applied uh, during the computer modeling and simulations. And then, uh, this is the expected result that we can have from computer modeling and simulations. You can see the differences if we apply the top layer with, uh, with a H is equal 1.5 meter and also 2.4, sorry, 2.2 uh, 2 meter. So the, the changes uh, in H occur on the soil behave. I mean that you can see the ultimate bearing capacity on the left side here is very clearly seen. However, uh, for this, uh, graph on the right side is not indicated clearly where is the ultimate bearing capacity so that we have to do the tangent line to get the asymptote or to get the final result of the uh, of the ultimate bearing capacity so these are the factors control to uh, to get the final ultimate bearing capacity so as I want to advise uh, for those uh, who wants to get involved with the computer modeling and simulations, you have to know what is your input parameters and input data. And then you have to expect what are the outputs outcome from your processing. So that when this thing clear, there will be no uh, nothing to afraid of when dealing with the computer modeling and simulations. So this is the one of the example result that we have from the uh, what I have from the computer modeling and simulations. And then when we did a comparison uh, for different size of footing, for example, B equal to one, B equal to two and three, these are the influence uh, to the ultimate bearing capacity value. For example, here, the effect of B over H ratio, and then the effect of footing, uh, footing width, you can see that the ultimate bearing capacity change uh, accordingly to the size of the uh, footing width, and also to the, effect of, uh, to the effect of B over H ratio. So again, it's very important when you are uh, doing the computer modeling is, and simulation is, is having the verifications of your results. So in this study, I did on verifications and uh, validation from the analytical solutions. So these are a lot of differences when, the, com when, we, uh, when compared to the theory and numerical simulations. So somehow, uh, there's some reasons why this thing happened due to the assumption um, made from the theoretical and numerical totally different. So please uh, bear in mind when you have this kind of the uh, result from the computer simulation, you need to justify why are these things uh, happen during your computer uh, simulations model. So again, eh, whatever you, uh, you bring in, as an input into your computer software, there will be an output. How to ensure that the output is true by doing the verification and validation uh, model or data. 
So this is one example uh, that uh, shows to you the contour of the bearing capacity of the soil, uh, which uh, shows to you the, the zone of the failure and the critical depth. It's a good thing about uh, computer modeling and simulation, the visualization can be seen as a at, uh, interactive as an attractive view. So uh, you can see from here, uh, this some sort critical underneath the footing. However, if, if you have B over H is equal to zero, there is no indicator red color. So we can say that there is no critical uh, zone underneath the footing. And to end of the conclusions, uh, I think that I'm quite, um, so what we can have from this uh, computer modeling and simulations on the part of model and simulate the real problem or design. So some design cannot be done manually or hand calculations. It can be done by having the computer modeling and simulations. If you have a complex problem or complex soil behavior or complex structure or complex loading, for example, seismic dynamic loads. So you have to opt by having the computer modeling and simulations. And then uh, it is good to predict on complex behavior of material model of the future needs. So as I explained earlier, why we are using the computer modeling and simulation, for example, we want to simulate the real process. We want to predict uh, something that uh, might happen uh, if we have some sort of design. For example, we want to construct a dam by, uh, with a high volume capacity of water. So in order to design a dam, with high volume of water, they cannot be done by construct, construction at the early because we want to save time and money. So we have to do the preliminary design. So the preliminary design can be, uh, can be done by using the hand calculations or by doing the software. So we can opt any software, computer software. We try to model a dam with some sort of quantity of water and then we check on the properties we check on the stability of the dam is it safe or not with the quantity of the water we assign so when have these things we can ensure that in the future our dam is safe to be constructed at a certain area so we bring to you the future needs by having the computer modeling simulations in the predictions so it's a good thing so if you want to see different uh, different view and different point of uh, opinion or time. And the next one is uh, on part of safe time and effective cost in project management or any uh, constructions here, sorry, typo. So uh, it did save time. So it also effective uh, cost. So we, uh, as, as I explained in the earlier, when we have the IR 4.0, the, the manpower is getting reduced. So there is a come technology, there is come to the robot, so there is come to IoT. So in this case, we can save time, we can uh, save cost for the for the uh, for the labor paid, and this will go to the uh, cost or impact to the having the high end technology. And the next one uh, important about computer modeling and simulations on the managerial data and decision making tool. So. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, again, the, the good things about cloud system is how we can manage our data. Because right now, we are not playing data with uh, one data. We have a multiple various data that need to be managed and applied. So how are you going to use effectively? So this comes with the uh, software, this comes with the cloud computer, this comes with the IoT. And one thing is that, about the computer modeling and simulation, you can make decision very fast. Is it suitable to be constructed? Is it to be? Uh, is it suitable to to have this kind of process? Is the process uh, will be uh, benefited in the future? How long it takes uh, to complete the process? So this is the thing that uh, we have to do uh, before we start doing any uh, decision, or we can look at closely. And I think that ends my presentations. And thank you for listening, everyone. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mashita. Uh, actually, you still have four minutes, uh, but it's okay if you uh, finish your lecture earlier. Uh, 
okay, okay then we can go on to the next uh, lecture from the dr perliana okay wait a minute okay uh, so the dr berliana perlian alkindi uh, she is from institute technology 10 november uh, the education uh, she was graduated from doctoral degree uh, majoring electrical engineering in artificial intelligence at its in 2019 and in 2013 uh, she was graduated from magister degree majoring informatics from itb and then uh, in 2011 uh, she was graduated from bachelor degree majoring informatics at pens the professional experience uh, right now uh, she was a lecturer uh, at department of electrical automation engineering its and since 2018 she also visiting lecturer in aviation engineering and safety academy the indonesian ministry of transportation and the honor and awards that she got in 2020 uh, she got the ieee site response to covid-19 research grants ieee site response to covid-19 and in 2019 they, uh, she also got the mit indonesia research alliance okay Dr. Berlian, are you ready for giving your speech? Thank you for the time. Okay. okay, the time is yours and your presentation will be limited for 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abdul, for the time and thank you for ITS International Office for giving the opportunity to sharing this knowledge and make some discussion with us. Um, okay. Let's go. Afternoon all and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this afternoon, uh, I would like to discuss some topic research is about artificial intelligence for innovation in industry and infrastructure. So, what do you think about the artificial intelligence? Is? Because we always hear AI in every field, in many fields, even our smartphone also have AI inside. But do we really know what is AI? So AI is the development of computer system that are able to perform tasks that would require human intelligence. So they can think, make some decision, visual perceptions, some recap, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between language. Language. And in AI, we have uh, some machine learning. How the machine, how the computer thinks like human brain. We have machine learning, and in machine learning, we have many algorithm and method to make some decisions and to think like human. And uh, in application of artificial intelligence, art, I'm sorry, artificial intelligence that give machines the ability to learn and improve without the help of humans or new programming. And how the machine learning learn and things like human, we have made some data sets, so many data sets, so many data sets give to the machine learning, it could be more better. And then we have good method and good algorithm to make some decision or predictions. So we have understand what is AI and how to make some computer thinking with machine learning. And now we will discuss about how AI, how implemented AI in industry. The first question is how smart is your factory? Is your factory connected with IoT or is your factory have brains to make decisions support system? Or is your factory have good maintenance and management? And what the difference between IoT and um, internet? Because in the past we always call it internet, but currently they always call it IoT. IoT means like uh, Internet of Things, because everything around of us currently is connected with Internet. So IoT is all the things around us 
run of us, which is connected with internet, internet, it can be called with IoT. And this is five foot that makes some uh, good AI implemented in industry 4.0 with half advantage. That is smart factories, predictive maintenance, computer vision, cyber physical system, and also industrial robots. And we will discuss it one by one. The smart factory. The factory which implement industry 4.0 using AI and IoT, and we all already understand what is AI and IoT. It, it's production process. These manufacturers have implemented transformation and can manage of deliver their data sets applying AI and machine learning to improve their quality control, their standardization, and the maintenance by the generating analysis of equipment. Um, so if we can see this picture, the key of smart factory is connectivity by IoT, and all the fields is send their data real time using the sensor, using the IoT, using the RFID from the production process until the distribution process. That is called by smart factories. And then what is the predictive maintenance? In predictive maintenance, data is collected from device and sensors connected to the IoT in real time. The data forms a pattern that can be learned by machine learning. The goal is to find patterns that can help predict. The pattern could be uniquely uh, unique in every sensor. So every sensor will be sent their conditions, they report to the database server and this pattern can be uniquely in every sensor, in each sensor. And ultimately preferred values to the learning algorithms. So the AI system are being used to, the, to achieve this goal. We have like a raw data sensor from many a thousand, maybe a uh, hundred, a thousand sensor. And then we have AI and SNP for machine hot, like pre-processing, we make some feature extraction to the raw data sensor. And then after normalization data, we make some classifier AI algorithm for detecting abnormalities. And post-processing is like a decision support system. What the result of this AI algorithm? The result could be normal or abnormal for the sensors. And we have two goals to predict. The first is condition prediction. We can make the we can implement supervised learning, for example, MLP, SVM, and then KNN, and many more. And then we also can make some prediction of next maintenance. This sensor will be normal or become abnormal. The prediction of next maintenance, we can implement time series prediction. For example, we can use recurrent neural networks methods or ATC. So this is what can AI do for predictive maintenance. And how about the computer vision? The computer vision is a very interesting research currently, not only for industry, but also in many field research, because uh, we know that we, in AI, we have deep learning, we have a very deep learning uh, methods. So they make, collect all many image data to decide or to make some predictions. And what is computer vision in, how implemented computer vision in industry? This computer vision will be identify and process object in image and videos in the same way humans do. So AI advanced and innovation in deep learning and neural network. This field has been able to take a big leap of recent years and has been able to surpass human in several tasks related to detecting and labeling object. Why? Because um, humans maybe need to 
to sleep or humans need to eat, need to eat and going somewhere but machines they don't break they don't sleep then they always working and they can count and detecting and labeling and learning every time without um, sleep so that's why it's able to take a quick lips between the human currently and how does the computer vision work for example in here we have like input the picture is about uh, fruit and then uh, we make some sensing device camera and then the machine learning makes some interpreting device and we can classify it what this ball orange banana peach mandarin and apple the sensing device and interpreting device in human vision is like eyes and brain so we see what the object and then we can interpreting and classify what is the object that we see and what the method in ai we usually use to the computer vision for example we can use mlp this is ML, mlp is neural multi-layer perception or neural network and it's very basic method for detecting some object and then we have convolution neural network and rcnn fast rcnn and last less we have faster rcnn and in Oxford, they have a VGG, very deep learning method. This VGG is like a, some laboratory who research about the computer vision object detection with deep learning. And they call it VGG Visual Geometric Group. And also, the last method is self-supervised learning. So it's like uh, supervised learning, but they learn by themselves how this data can be learning for the next to make some decisions. Self-supervised learning is can be because it's like similar with reinforcement learning. And still many more because uh, the research day by day, they have many in innovation in computer vision. The four first form in industry that can be implemented by AI is cyber physical system. Uh, what is cyber physical system? Cyber physical system is embedded software into the physical world and appear in applications such as smart networking, robotics, and smart manufacturing. Cyber physicals open the possibility for the industry to conduct efficient and effective daily collaboration from any location around the world to provide a fully distributed manufacturer. In this diagram, we know that uh, we have information that's sent by the sensor and all device and collected in some database and the cyber physical system can be sent it to make some communication, computation, and controlling for automated automation. These three fields can be connected by the cyber physical system. And in this diagram, the cyber physical system, we have feedback system, and then cyber security is also important because all data that can be everything is when connected to internet it could be have uh, some uh, cyber crime or some hacking opportunity so when cyber security is also important things in cyber physical system safety the hazard analysis safety constraint and also lose some data and what is the cyber physical system application in? Uh, we have applications like communication, consumer, energy, in infrastructure, in healthcare, manufacturing, military, and, and many more. So we, the cyber physical system can be applied in many fields. And then the cyber physical system can be implemented, AI can be implemented in cyber physical system by computing 
how um, how the smart networking, how the head of the networking, and then we can also make some algorithm to make safety this cyber physical system. So that's how AI implemented in cyber physical system. And number five, uh, how AI implemented in, in industry is for industrial robot. We have like uh, five points that most uh, AI implemented in industrial robot. The first is AI-based dynamic modeling. AI-based dynamic modeling is system to understand the behavior and control parameters of the robot. So in industry, the, the industrial robots have the human to make some producing process, for example, arm robot and then a collaborative robot. This arm robot and collaborative robot can be programmed to make some behavior and control parameters. The second point is explainable deep learning. Deep learning has algorithms that are very similar to the structure of the brain. Why? Because um, in machine learning, we need to make some feature extraction and then we just input it to the machine learning algorithm. But in deep learning, the feature extraction is also have one some algorithm in deep learning. We don't need to make some feature extraction because deep learning have one process about the feature extraction. In deep learning, it's required to achieve higher perceptual accuracy and robustness based on the variety sensor. So many sensors that uh, embedded in the arm robot or the collaborative robot can be sent the data to the deep learning and deep learning need to make some decision support, support system to control this machine. And if we already have implemented the, extent, the deep learning, we can make some large scale AI and deep learning. So machine learning development and distribute pipelines because maybe the company or the industry not only have one uh, manufacturing, but they have a several manufacturing in many area in different area or city. They can put some red scroll AI and deep learning to make an AI effective at scale and efficiently. Number four is environmental understanding and decision making. The main focus is on learning appropriate environmental models by constructing probabilistic generative models using the data provided. The data is provided by the sensors or the device that uh, connected with IoT and send all the data to the server. And this helps in decision making and control and makes some optimization producing. So in some industry, if we have already learning how the environment about the industry and manufacturing process, we will know how to, to make the optimization of production and make some decision making. For example, um, in Indonesia, if we have uh, great sessions, uh, for example, in Idul Fitri, the manufacturing will become, the production process will become very uh, higher. So if we already learning about the environmental understanding, we can make some preparations and decision making and make some optimization production. So at the hacker day, we, at the hackers day, we know that we don't need to make lack of production because we already prepared it before. And about the optimization of control through the reinforcement learning. Okay, before that, I will explain what is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is like um, the combination between supervised and unsupervised learning. They learn about the past, but this experience of the past will be make some decision in the future. So 
it's like the human learning by their experience to make some decision in the future. In industrial robot, we make some optimization of control through the reinforcement learning. So how to control the industrial robot to make some optimization is like how to learn the behavior of this robot and then how many times, for example, how many times this robot to take some process production and then how many times this robot makes some abnormal function and something like that. And then we learn it from the past to make some decision in the future. That's the meaning of how to make optimization control through reinforcement learning. And in manufacturing, AI is applied to production and make it a self-calibrating factory. AI provides the transferable knowledge and solution to reduce setup time and make control structures flexible to improve their performance because uh, we already know the experience for the past. We need to, we can improve the performance for the futures. So this is why reinforcement needs to uh, implement it in optimization of control. And that's all five things that are uh, very often used in industrial, in industry about uh, AI, how to implement AI in industry. So I think we can talk to the next subtopic and what, is, what can AI do in infrastructure? Yes, and AI and machine learning for smart construction. The potential application of machine learning and AI in construction are very fast because uh, we have many fields about constructions, infrastructure projects, and also about um, the infrastructure is not only about the construction project, but also about the infrastructure of governmental, about the um, software and application development. And the machine learning is like a smart assistant that can scrutinize this data. It then alerts project managers about the critical things that need their attention. Several construction application already use AI in this way. For example, this is uh, some project in smart construction. So the robot can help to make some building. The result is better than the human, it's have better and smarter than the human. Because uh, the program from AI can be learned how the human do like that and then um, the robot have precisions uh, for the size and how to make some good building. That is why AI comes significant implication to all important planes or the construction. Sorry. This is why AI comes with significant implication to all important players along the construction value chains. A selection of those implication is listed to the following. So uh, why we need to implement AI in infrastructure projects, for example, in building manuf material manufacturers, we can make some improved quality and reduce complaints recall, and then we can optimize the formulation and productions improve the utilization of products machinery, reduce the downtimes because uh, the robots can help humans to make some building faster so we can reduce the downtime. And building material distributors or machines and distribution about the material can be more faster and optimi optimization. Find optimal points in time to procure, optimize the inventory management, offer the optimally tailored price and service to customer, optimize the automate, out, 
autonomous machinery delivery of goods. So uh, we can make some delivery of goods or material to the site project. And how about in architect suite? AI can also be implemented in architect suite because we have like um, some application in AI to put some 3D dimension like to designs of uh, good building or architects building. Develop new creative design and reduce effort in planning thread by other planes, for example, in construction company, we can integrate the planning into the range of services. And how about in construction company? The construction company, the stakeholder, can track the progress and quality in real time because all the data inside project sent to the database server, to the application server. So the director or the manager in construction company can track the progress and quality in real time. And also we can use the autonomous machinery, reduce time for search and tools and materials. And if we use some um, robotics and then the human only can the human can help to make some building and it can be improve the safety of this employer of the human the facility managers is for example to control building technology automatically and exercise predictive maintenance and improve some decision making and also in deep learning, if we can implement some deep learning in architects or in, in architects or in civil field, we can make some decisions. So for example, we have to class data that is a good building or not good building. And then the machine will be learn how kind of good building and not good building, the system can be decide some building by capturing or make some sensor to see the, the wall of this building and make some decision this building is not really good or this building is good. It can be make some decision support system with deep learning. This is the example of AI in construction and infrastructure project. So, uh, there I took uh, for tens projects that is often using in the world. For the first is to prevent cost of runs. ANN or artificial neural network are used on projects to predict cost of runs based on factors such as project size, contract type, and the competence level of project managers. The historical data such as plan, start, and end dates are used by predictive models to envision the realistic timelines for the future's project. So the employers or the client cannot be make some uh, cheating from this project because the AI already makes some this prediction about the next project for the timelines of this project and also the project size. The second is AI for a better design of within so the generative design. And uh, we have uh, some picture. This is for example, to reconstruct 3D buildings with deep learning. We use deep learning to reconstructing this 3D building. And how to make reconstructing this 3D building, we, we can implement it as many leader sensor and then this leader sensor will be sent the data to AI and we can make some construction with 3D models without coming to that area. Number third is about risk mitigation. Every construction project has some risks that come in many forms such as a quality, safety, time and cost risk. There are AI and machine learning solution today that general construction use to monitor and prioritize risk on the job site. So the project team can focus their limited time to resource or the biggest 
risk factor. And how about the project planning? In AI, when we can call some startup AI launched in 2018 with the promise that some robots and artificial intelligence have the key to solve, lead, and over budget construction project. The company used robots to autonomously capture 3D scan of construction site and then fits the data into a deep learning neural network that classifies how far along different subprojects are. So it's like make some image processing and calculate it to the machine learning. And we can make some decision support to classify, to classify how far the different subprojects. And we can count it faster. In construction project, they always have a many side project in some company. In AI, we can make some job set more productive. There are companies that are starting to offer self-driving construction machinery to perform the repetitive tasks more efficiently than their human counterparts. For example, like pouring concrete, bricklaying, welding, and demolitions. And we can see in these pictures that AI, robotic AI can be helped to make some building with a human and it can become more faster rather than working only by human. And AI for construction safety. AI not only for uh, make some easier work by implemented in some robotical and um, make some object detection, but also AI can improve the construction projects more safety. AI can developing an algorithm that analyze photos from its job set, scans the employer for safety hazards such as workers not wearing protective equipment, for example, a helmet or head spoon and shoes from the special shoes from the project and not within the protective equipment and correlates the image with its accident record. So it can make some hazard and warning to that employers to use the wearing protective equipment. So I can make improve the safety in construction project. And number seven is uh, why AI will address the labor shortage. The construction companies are starting to use AI and machine learning to better plan for distribution of labor and machinery across jobs. A robot constantly evaluating jobs, workers, and the location of the workers and equipment enables the project's managers to tell instantly with job sites have enough workers and equipment to complete the projects on a schedule. So we can make some planning and scheduling to the labor and also time to finish these projects. And how about the offsite contractions? The construction companies are increasingly relying on the offsite factories, staff pay, and autonomous robots that piece together components of a building, which are then pieced together by humans worker on site. So currently, AI not working a lot, but uh, they work together on site with the human, with labor to make the building or the project is more faster and better quality and then have more safety and also it can be good uh, planning and optimization to the projects and because all um, this project has by the robots it also can make some reports in number nine that is a big data they come from the report from the just the data from the sensor because every equipment have been embedded with the sensor. So at a time when a massive amount of data is being created every day and in the real time, 
and when they make some products and process, they always sense the data. The AI, the AI system are exposed to an endless amount of data to learn from and improve every day. Every job site becomes a potential data source for AI. So for example, in this infrastructure project in the futures, we have like site sensors and then all the equipment is connected with the sensors and connected with IoT. And then in the office, they also connected and collaborative. We can send all the data on the progress every day and they have robots to help the labor to mix buildings. We can make plugging building product with the human and robot. And also the delivery process, the deep distribution process is connected with IoT so we can track uh, how far and where this product, this material comes. And the product also can be implemented with RFID or sensors. And this is a skill of labor. If we also have connected IoT, the labor can be learned and how to make good building, for example, and can improve their skill by using some online learning and code. They can make some other certification and they make some good building with this workshop or this training in um, some online learning. And then how about the stakeholder? The management do not need to come to the side project they have some application to control or to monitoring the progress of this project. And then uh, they check how the high quality of this building by the sensor and camera that have been scanned in this building. And then they also check the safety progress to the human labor at the site project. And also they check the progress, is the project is uh, on time, on progress, or they don't meet, they not meet the, the schedule and also on budgeting. So the management only can control it only in the office. They don't need to go to the side project and it's more efficient and can reduce the cost of this project. And uh, after this project is finished, what next should be can can be do in AI? We can AI can make post contractions. So building managers can use AI long after the construction of building is complete. Building information modeling or building stores information about the structure of this building. AI can be used to monitor developing problems and even offer solutions to prevent problems that could be happen in the next. And that's all uh, tense um, AI can do, the most AI can do from the construction and infrastructure projects. And this is what example about uh, our research about. I'm sorry, this computer is okay. We make some predictive maintenance, for example, with chip. RNN is recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural network is, for example, from time series prediction. And we combine it make some modified with LSTM architecture. LSTM is long short term memory. In this study case, the application, we make some in application of smart city, they have, uh, we have 50 sensors installed in all parts of the city. And these sensors are connected to the IoT and report their data in real time on the database server in the city center. Its data reported by the sensor has a certain pattern. So from this pattern, 
chip pre-RNA and LSTM to determine when the sensor is malfunctioning or damaged so that field officers can carry out maintenance on a scheduled base. So, and this is why we use uh, recurrent neural network. We can see the difference between ne uh, basic neural network and recurrent neural network. And humans have two types of memory. That is um, short-term memory, STM, and long-term memory, LTM. Then how to make AI able to have memories like humans? The RNN, if we see this image, we can know that RNN has loop or back diagram that are in its hidden layer in its, in its hidden layer. Let's look how to compare the architecture between the neural network and architecture of the RNN. So neural network only have to come to the hidden, from input layer, they come to the hidden layer. And then this hidden layer, they count the weight and bias, and then they come to the output layer. But in, um, recurrent neural network, we have some uh, backup at a back diagram in the hidden layer. So the hidden layer, one hidden layer and other hidden layer is connected. They connected, for example, in here, we have XT4, XT3, XT2, and soon, and others. Uh, there is, they connected with we we double urex and we count the the weight w is weight w is weight we can count the weight and this is weight input and we have weight output but we also count the weight between the hidden layers so this is why the difference between neural networks and recurrent networks for the time series predictions we can use a recurrent neural network because they have uh, better results. And then why we need LSTM architecture. And this is the difference between RNN architecture and RNN LSTM architecture. The LSTM is an additional architecture that can solve the problem of gradient finishing. Okay, the gradient, gradient finishing is like um, if we use the sigmoid functions, then the more we learn, the more we train the data, the, okay. the more we learn the data, we can make some, the result could become zero. So. If we want to optimize the data, we can make some LSTM architecture. That is the difference between RNN and LSTM. And then in LSTM, we have first gate. First gate is about the forget gate, how to forget the unimportant information. And then the second gate is input gate, to input what is the important information to combine and to process in this deep learning process. And then the third kit is the output kit. The result of what important memory that can be learned and processed to make some decisions. And this is the results from this smart city implementation, the, the predictive maintenance with deep learning, the current neural network with LSTM architecture. Uh, we have 50 flag sensor, and we can use the, we can see that RNN and LSTM RNN have the different result and LSTM RNN have a better result. We can see that the real sensor performance and sensor prediction is near from the real results. So I think that's all from um, my presentation, but we need to remember uh, AI makes it easy and automates every field. Human are helped a lot by the application of AI. But however, AI is also reducing the number of jobs. 
well, the human population is growing day by day. And I think that's all. Thank you for the time. And if you have any questions, let's discuss together. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Berlian, for your presentation. So we will continue to question and answer session. Okay, maybe I will open uh, three uh, live uh, questions from you. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can raise your hand, and then I will limit for the uh, three uh, three live uh, live uh, questions, and then we will move to the uh, question that already submitted in the form. Okay, maybe anyone who want to ask live in this session, please uh, raise your hand. Oh, not yet. Wait a minute. Oh, so, so nobody wants to ask live. So maybe we can discuss from the uh, question in the form. Okay. Maybe uh, the first one is from the Benjamin Limanto from ITS Information System. Uh, the question is for wait a minute, Dr. Mashita. Uh, there's the question actually. Uh, the first one is how to find the right mathematics equation, especially if it is dynamic system modeling. Sometimes when we create a model, uh, we need to find the equation, but there are no paper or journal that talk about that equation, especially if it is a new field or topic that need to be modeled. And the second one, how to create a good scenario at the model. Is there any special tricks or way of thinking to formulate the scenario that will be tested on a model? Okay. I think that in order to answer for the first question is first, uh, you have to understand what is your problems. And then uh, when you look at closely, the problem is on what you are facing now is um, by having the basic fundamentals uh, physics phenomena. For example, you can adopt the physics uh, chemical and other than uh, surround us, so, uh, you can start off uh, building by identifying uh, the dependent variable, independent variable, the factors, and then we have to go to the ground theory of the mathematical itself to start off develop our own mathematical equations. So it is true, when you look at to the uh, journal articles, the mathematical equations uh, given on the paper is very general. So we have to figure out and we have to do some literature search to, to blend in together uh, from the previous research to the current situations by adopting some uh, this uh, phenomena around us. I mean that the multi-physics phenomena and you have to uh, get words uh, with the physicians uh, and chemists uh, chemist to, to, to have or to, to help you to find out what as what is the best uh, model or mathematical solutions. So uh, you when you're doing the modeling simulations, next one is to find the best uh, tool or the best software to replicate your problem. And back to the question number two, I think that it's uh, it's similar to the question number one that's uh, answered um, just now. So uh, it is, uh, you have to understand what the problems you are facing. If you couldn't uh, get in, for example, identify the independent variable, what are factors uh, control to the to the simulations. So it couldn't it couldn't give you the right one. So something that you have to find from the secondary data. You, you do on the parametric study, uh, get, getting all the information, the data collections, you do your own parametric study, and then you have to reanalyze, remodel, re-simulate to find the right one. It is true, it spent a lot of time before we can have the right model. That's the risk that it's all about. I hope that I answered your uh, these two questions. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. And okay. another question is still for uh, Dr. Mashita, but I think it's uh, a little bit similar with the previous one. Um, uh, so maybe I will combine it into two, uh, two person. I will combine it into one, uh, one question. Uh, the first one is uh, from the Hanugra. I think the question is similar in the, uh, like the previous one. So uh, he asked about the 
during uh, preparing research and paper, sometimes our proposed methods and simulation is already known by another researcher. Uh, can you give the tips how to process simulation results to make it more interested to another researcher? And ideally, how many simulations are needed to ensure our method is already proper? Uh, it's a little bit similar with the question from Bu Susi Junia Stuti from Electrical Department. Uh, she asked about the validation and data verification. Can we use the literature uh, study to evaluate it? To answer for the first questions, uh, I my advice to you, get familiar with a lot of tools, software to suit with your problems. I mean that there's a, there's a many uh, open source uh, software to help you to do uh, a research uh, in computer modeling and simulations. For example, uh, you have to identify, is it your problems on mathematical itself? Or is it your problem combination between mathematics uh, or multi-physics phenomena? Or it's just on part of the structure problem? So uh, when you identify this kind of problems and the application itself, so you can have a few uh, software, a few analysis that can be blend in together mm -hmm. so that you can produce a new result. So it means that uh, we have to try and error play with the some variables you add in a new variable that having been touched by previous researchers so when we analyze in different way that become a new for you so i mean that uh, if before this uh, people are doing the analysis using uh, step pro only maybe we can use some additional tools such as matlab doing on part of the mathematical uh, for preliminary stage and then we embed in the step pro so it's become different from others. And then for the second questions, uh, for the verifications and validations, I might suggest to you, uh, if you have the physical model that it's good for the first one. And then let's say you don't have uh, some sort of time and then budget constraint, you couldn't do a physical model uh, in the lab work. So it is suggested also uh, you need to have the data collections or database or uh, all the secondary data. You, simul uh, you simulate model by having this secondary data and then you make the comparisons, verifications and validation from your own. So that's how we can do in the computer modeling and simulations. It's something that um, we can support with other sources, for example, from uh, outside company, uh, from the consultant company. Do they have this kind of the data or do they, uh, do they have some, uh, some sort of site investigation or do they on the design stage? So we can do comparison from their sources with, my, uh, with our sources from the computer modeling and simulations that I can suggest to you. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, the next one to make a more interesting, maybe I will invite um, two of our participants that already raised uh, her or his hand, uh, Mr. Yoga Utanugraha and Miss Imama. Okay. For the first one, maybe Mr. Yoga, uh, can you hear my voice? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can hear. Okay. Voice. Yeah. Okay. If you have any question, please uh, go directly. Yes, thank you. Uh, for, uh, I want to ask to Dr. Masita uh, uh, for the research we do mathematical mathematical modeling, simulation, and experiment or validation. Uh, as your experiment and as your experience, uh, how much the error uh, from 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 yeah from mathematical modeling to simulation? How much the error and the, from simulation? To validation, uh, is there any error or 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 just one hundred percent perfect or or, or uh, you can share your experience? Thank you. In order to answer for for your questions, uh, from my own experience, it is advisable to have a minor error around ten percent only. If you have more than ten percent error, you have to redo. <laughs> check on your mathematical model and do some uh, repetitions, uh, computer modeling, uh, for example, maybe you have to check from the beginning of your processing involved in computer modeling and simulation, for example, uh, loading apply, mesh generations, boundary conditions. These are the things that you have to, to figure out, to look at closely why this error 
occur in the big difference. So it is suggested when you have comparison data between your uh, computer modeling results uh, with the other ones, uh, either analytical formula or mathematical formula, it is advisable around 10% only. If you have more than that, you have to justify why this thing happened. Maybe you have to look at, uh, look at closely from the beginning of the assumptions that you apply from the other theory and then what the other uh, authors or researchers apply in their research work. That's my suggestions uh, for you. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. So, okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one, uh, Miss Imama. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, right, please. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you for Dr. Mashita and Dr. Bellion uh, for the sharing. It's nice sharing. And from your explanation about model and simulation, we know that simulation helps to learn about real system without having the system at all. But we also know to build up models, we require special training. Training will make a model learning and make the rules through experience. And the model will answer according by rules. So what do you think about the influence of training and amount of data on computer modeling and simulation? And especially for Dr. Berlian, uh, from your closing statement that you presented, we call uh, your statement with disruption era and how to solve it to make AI and technology not being problem for a human. Thank you for the time. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Imama. Okay, please, for the speaker, who first? Uh, Dr. Masita, okay. <laughs> thank you for asking the question, uh, Madam Imama. Actually, it is true. When you are doing the computer modeling and simulation, it takes time for you to master in using that software. It takes around uh, six months for the beginning to have the self uh, study or what we call it as parametric study. And then back to the how much data that requires uh, for the end of the good result. It is can be seen from your analysis on the convergence results, convergence data. If you have the convergence results, so we can say that the data that you assign it is enough. However, if you uh, ass uh, assign with a lack of the data, this become um, divergence. I mean that uh, your result it uh, can goes to in accurate uh, answers. So this is it takes time for you to do a lot of uh, simulations work before you can have the final one. So my suggestions, if you really want to get involved with the computer modeling uh, simulation, start from now because we couldn't understand uh, the software itself because we are not the developer of the system. We are the end user. In order to understand the end user, we have to play as an end user by having our own experience. Um, and through it is takes time for you to get master in. That's all from me. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Berlian? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. So it's like, um, why, how to, to solve this problem is like, this is our futures. Like uh, AI can be denied everything Implement, AI can implement it in many fields, but the more demand AI in many fields, it's also demand the employers in AI. So, for example, in Singapore, now the students from the elementary schools, they learn about the programming because we know and we understand and we realize that programming is important for our future. So you, the humans, well, everyone needs to learn about how to make programming. Even the labor in construction or infrastructure project, they need to learn about the programming so they will have some jobs in their fields because they can do the programming by themselves. I think that's all. So because we can deny this, this is our features. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for your answer. Maybe uh, one person, uh, the last person who want to ask a uh, live in this session. Uh, if there is uh, no one who wants to ask live, maybe I will continue to the written question that already provided to us. Okay, maybe is uh, we have some uh, question for Dr. Berlian. 
uh, the first one is from Muhammad Azril from Institute Teknologi 10 November Electrical Engineering. Uh, he asked about how to operate AI in uh, sewing industrial, or maybe it's a cloth factory. Thank you for the questions. And in industrial, in sewing industrial, we can also make some uh, first the project maintenance about the sewing machines, and then also we can make some optimization about how to um, to make the optimization of production i already explained it before for example in indonesia we have a big day like ideal victory and we can make some predictions to make some meat to stocks so we can we can uh, prevent the lax production at that uh, the big day and also in saving protection uh, the we have patterns to the clothes the computer visions can make some uh, object detections and make some classification to assess this clothes is like our standard or no so they, if uh, this clothes is not our standard the compare can separate it so it can reduce the humans to to choose which the clothes is good uh, for example success production or not success production by their patterns in this clothes using the computer vision okay okay for so for the next question is uh, in some articles uh, from sorry it is from read data fatima Zahra uh, from its electrical automation engineering uh, she she asked about in some article it is said that the implementation of ai needs a lot of money is it possible for small to medium enterprise or sme to implement ai while they are not having a lot of money or is it any way to help uh, SME to improve their system by implementing AI and what is the first thing that SME have to prepare before implementing AI maybe it's question for Dr. Belian thank you for the questions the first thing is uh, we AI is expensive or not is depend what mm -hmm. AI we can we want to build. Mm -hmm. So if it is large scale and high uh, technology, it's also need more money. But if we can make some simple AI to make some prediction in some company or in some projects. And also there is a lot of free software to make uh, some program in AI, but the we need to save the data. The data need money to buy some storage. If you have a small data, then we don't need to buy some big storage or cloud storage. We can make some local data and so called local storage to save our data. And I think it it is uh, didn't need more. Did, doesn't need more money or much money. And so the answer is depend what AI we, we will do. If we can make some simple AI with a free software and also free database. For example, we can use uh, Google Collapse or free software like Python. Python is also free. And so also we can prepare the database with store local storage. And then the next question is what to prepare the first yes. time. Okay. The first time we need to prepare the AI is like uh, the, an the analysis of the data. Because like human, we can learn without any books. How we can learn if we don't have data. So we learn about the data, the raw data. And then the data will become the input. And then the second, we need to decide the goal of this artificial intelligence what is your de destination to use this AI so if we have the input and then we have the output now we can decide what the suitable AI or machine learning algorithm from this this problem so we need input output and then the process of this output. 
algorithm the algorithm to process demand. Okay, uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, the next one is about uh, still for the Dr. Uh, Berlian uh, about AI. Uh, is it possible to apply it in our country? Uh, it means in Indonesia, especially in remote area that we've known that there is a big social inequality, also the human resource inequality. How about your opinion to solve it? Thank you. So, what is AI possible? Is, is it possible? Yeah, in our country, especially in remote area, where we know that maybe not uh, all of the people in that area are educated about AI. Yeah. Okay. First, in remote area, we can make some AI in local. We don't need IoT. Mm -hmm. But is it still possible? And then, uh, what is with the difference? But the, in the local area, we need the infrastructure of AI. The minimum is a uh, device to process and like I explained it before, data and what is output. If they, we have these three components, we don't need internet or IoT or everything. We can make some AI in remote area. Okay. And um, it is suitable for Indonesia. I think uh, if we know what the uh, our president's uh, what the speech at the last time in the PPPT, they, he said that uh, we have AI summit and AI is one of our national strategies currently until the 2025. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so the next question, maybe because we are running off time, maybe we still have around eight minutes. Uh, we have uh, three similar questions about uh, the simulation. Uh, maybe it's uh, directed to uh, Dr. Mashita. Okay, the first one uh, is from the Feb Febi Artwodini Muktadiro from Electrical Engineering. So she asked about uh, whether is it possible for use to combine two approach like uh, simulation and experiments in the same time to overcome our research problem if is it possible how we can do it and then the second one it's also asked by another uh, another participants is uh, how to guarantee the accuracy of the simulation to our research our research result how convincing the result of simulation for the reviewer to accept our paper in journal okay thank you for asking the question in order to answer first one so it is possible to have the mixed method uh, between the experimental and computer modeling simulations so it means that um, first of all we uh, we do on the experimental we understand the 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 characteristic of the samples or whatever uh, materials or structure you have uh, in lab, and then uh, you do the modeling and simulations uh, in the software. It means that we want to see uh, something differently that we couldn't observe during the experimental work. So that is the purpose we combine between experimental and computer modeling and simulations, and then. The, the most uh, the most and the best part is that we can see something or what what I say that is a simulations that cannot be done during the lab work so that's good things and the visualizations of the experiments uh, can be in different way so we can interpret the output the result from the computer modeling and simulations so that's become a good point when you do the paper is uh, article research paper and then you want to submit to the journal so please ensure that the the data comparison from the experimental work and also from the numerical must be in less than percent and in, in addition, we can do the verifications, validations from other sources of the uh, articles uh, which are doing on the same uh, topic like us. I mean that we can have the previous data uh, doing on the same uh, model, same uh, uh, different tool, for example. So we can make comparison and ensure that the, the results that we obtain from these two or from others uh, are 
uh, findings in the last 10%. So that's how we can ensure our paper submissions to be accepted uh, in by editor channels. That's the things that you have to uh, hold in your hand when you are writing a research paper, especially on modeling and simulations. I know it's a bit tough to uh, this this kind of paper to be accepted uh, when you submit to the article journal because there's a lot of work to convince the editors and also the reviewers that we are doing uh, the right one and we produce different or we produce contributions of, on this topic and then how to prove it and how to write properly that's uh, make your paper accepted that's my idea lah. if you can have a few approaches uh, for your uh, methods that's good way lah for acceptable thank you okay thank you so i think uh, it's uh, we have one last question from Bruri Tria Sartana but i think the first question already answered by Dr. Masita because he ask about can simulation in a research replace the role of experiments i think it's we can combine right uh, the uh, experiment and also the simulations but uh, he has some question for dr berlian uh, you say that we can deny the disruption what should we prepare for the current generation to face this era okay, thank you for the questions Yes, I think uh, in this era uh, for your generations, uh, you all the students is already in digitalization, digitalization generations. You already know how to make some program and can operate it easily without doing some uh, training like us, <laughs> like us is older. <laughs> and then what you need to prepare, for example, uh, my kids in junior high school, elementary school, they already learn about programming. And I think programming is uh, like a basic skills we need to have. Even like uh, Dr. Mashito is from civil engineering field, she know how to make some computer modeling. So it's like uh, the very basic skills we need to have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because we are close to the our end of session, maybe I would like to say thank you for our uh, presenter today, Dr. Masita and also Dr. Berlian. I am sorry if I have mistakes uh, during uh, during this presentation. So maybe uh, we can close uh, this question and answer session, and I will uh, offer the session to the master of ceremony, Samara. Are you there? Yes, Bapak. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Bapak Abdul, for conducting this amazing session. And also, thank you very much to Dr. Mashita and Dr. Berliar for the excellent lecture today. Uh, please give applause to our speakers and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature. Furthermore, we would like to present a certificate awarding to both of our speakers and also our moderator today. First is the certificate presented for Dr. Mashita. Now is the certificate presented for Dr. Berlian. Last but not least is the certificate presented for Bapak Abdul Munif. Once again, thank you very much to Dr. Mashita, Dr. Berlian, and also Bapa Abdul for your availability on today's guest lecture series. We believe that your lecture will be useful for all of the participants. Before we end our lecture today, we invite you all participants as well as the honorable speakers and moderator to take a group photo. To all participants, please open your camera.
So we are going to wait a few minutes until all of the participants are ready. Okay, since we have a couple of slides, so please keep your smile until we finish uh, the group photo. Now I will count. One, two, three. Cheers. Once again. One, two, three. Now we have finished our group photo. And then for the participants, please fill the feedback form through the link bit.ly slash feedbackgls that you can also see in the Zoom chat room. The deadline for filling the feedback form is one hour after we finish this session. And we want to remind you that the participant who will get the STEM is participants who come on time, join this event until the end, and also fill the feedback form. Finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series. And we sincerely apologize for any mistakes you may have made in presenting as Masters of Ceremony and Committee. Thank you very much to our honorable speakers, moderator, and all participants for the attention and cooperation. We will see you in the next guest lecture series on SDGs next week. So we'll, we will have one Thank session today with a topic from urban to smart city by utilizing IOTS that will be delivered by our speakers, Prof. Rosiati Ibrahim, and happy Hapsari Handayani PhD. And we will also have another session on Wednesday with a topic sustainable mechanized agriculture for research and technology that will be delivered by our speakers, Dr. Amelisa Betrico and Professor Dr. Insinyur Suprianto and Dedi Zulhidayat Nur PhD. So see you next week. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for all the participants. Thank you so much for our notable speaker and moderator. Let me end this session in the one and stay healthy and goodbye. See you on the next Gal as Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>